Thank you for inviting me to give this talk. The title of, uh, of my talk is Planning for Female Workers, Sir Pratik uh, Gaddis's 1925 Master Plan for Tel Aviv. The modern Hebrew city of Tel Aviv is largely associated in popular culture with the city's Bauhaus architecture produced by German er immigrants of the Fifth Aliyah as the backdrop for the development and flourishing of Hebrew culture, language, and identity. The cultural legacy of Tel Aviv, uh, the first Hebrew city and the model for Israeli urbanism to this day, is one of a built environment produced by and for capital accumulation and is designed by those German-educated architects for the bourgeois immigrants. The city's significance for the production of Hebrew culture is therefore largely associated with its club capitalist legacy, often discussed as counterculture or counterpoint to the dominant labor culture um, of the country. This capitalist built oasis historiographical narrative shapes the Tel Aviv's urban history till this day. Nevertheless, Tel Aviv's iconic status as modern city and UNESCO World Heritage Site on one hand, and the first Hebrew city on the other, are closely tied to its urban master plan of 1925 by Sir Patrick Geddes, designed explicitly for female workers in mind. Moreover, as this study shows, these urban workers have shaped Tel Aviv as a worker city in the 1930s and 40s by appropriating Geddes' uh, master plan and producing semi-autonomous worker neighborhoods at the edges of the plan, constructing their own houses using DIY labor and finance based on their future earnings. For those of you familiar with planning history, the very idea of city planned for and by female workers may seem surprising. Indeed, much of the history of modern planning points to the planner as producer of top-down schemes serving power mechanisms in the context of industrial capitalism and state building. The client of these plans, a generic urban resident, is epitomized with the Le Corbusier's modular, an abstract male figure with no age, gender, or class characteristics, whose proportions and imagined needs determine the requirements of the mid, um, minimum dwelling unit. In this context, Tel Aviv's Geddes plan represents a distinctly different approach to urban planning, questioning the underlying premise of modern city planning as top-down planning, capitalist development, and significantly anonymous one size fit all planning. Geddes, one of the founders of the modern uh, discipline of city planning, was a Darwinian professor of biology at Edinburgh University. His research trajectory shifted towards home human society, facing the dire dwelling conditions of urban workers in the industrial city. Geddes studied how the industrial capitalist city was shaped for rather than by the workers and required them to adapt to this environment in order to survive a little bit like, like wildlife. He was concerned that the city did not provide workers with the architectural premise, namely with the capacity of humans to adapt their environment to their needs. Seeking uh, ways for urban workers to shape the city for their needs, Geddes contributed to two disciplines that would shape modernity, sociology and city planning. This paper presents findings indicating that Geddes had designed Tel Aviv explicitly thinking of working class women. Namely, not only does the center of the Israeli metropol metropolitan area include spaces designed for women, but these spaces were also explicitly designed in the mid-20s to produce an enabling urban environment for women and their children as the major clients of, the modern, of modern city planning. Geddes's plan produced daily encounters between women in the urban bloc, which created a social and political stronghold for workers as a broad spectrum um, of uh, worker organizations in the city in the 1930s. The urban blocs um, which Geddes termed home blocks, have enabled and still enable today meaningful encounters between women that include aspects of their identity around professional connections and uh, manifestations of urban fashion, activism, and uh, even organizing political, ac political, um, political activities per se. Geddes's proposal for, was for a city for 100,000 residents um, basing on this um, housing-based urban vision, stretching from the existing city to the uh, Yarkon River. Geddes's focus on housing as a fundamental problem of city planning pertains to thinking deeply about the family and its components. Helen Meller shows that Geddes' valley section methodology is based on the place work folk trinity, which the French, uh, French sociologist Laplace has emphasized as the basic social unit in the physical environment. 
Ghetto spatial ideas included the home as the basic building block of the city. Ghetto's therefore marked ordinary working women and their children as the main customers of city planning and formulated practical planning issues concerning their uses of the city, first and foremost, the housing issue. He did not make an ideological statement here, namely, he was not a feminist in the conventional sense of the word, but he formulated his position from the findings of his survey methodology of living conditions in the European industrial city and 25 um, different cities in India. Geddes' survey of many cities have led him to conclude that the unplanned city creates harsh living conditions that pr primarily affect working class women and children. Thus, he argued, city planning should direct resources primarily to this population and focus on its living conditions. In his uh, survey of Tel Aviv report, he wrote, there is an increase in poor health, especially among women and children in all cities, which increases with every floor beyond the second floor, and especially between the third and the fourth floors, especially charged mortality in the first year. There is no point in attributing high mortality rates to divine will or destiny, since this is primarily a matter of housing and urban planning. Gittes' design method involved spending two months surveying the city and region and producing a 65-page town planning report and a plan for Tel Aviv as a city for 100,000 inhabitants. Gittes' survey focused on Tel Aviv's contemporary housing conditions, identifying um, housing as the major force in the town's um, urbanization from its early years. The housing shortage in Tel Aviv in the 20s was acute. The city's population was increased uh, sevenfold as a result of the sudden departure of Jaffa Jews with the 1921 riots and their uh, application of the British mandate. Due to demand, housing costs rose to about 40% of a working salary. This led to homelessness uh, and workers setting up barracks and tents in neighborhoods without streets, sewers, or lighting or sharing condominiums with other families or extended families, which affected especially uh, working women whose home was also their workspace. Geddes diagnosed Tel Aviv of 1925 as a city on a dangerous path of transforming into a city of slum dwellers in what he termed human warehouses to maximize land gains and housing density uh, that was contributing to high mortality. Against this planning approach, Geddes suggested another path, which goes back to Tel Aviv's original values as a garden city, specifically referred to workers' housing, offering construction of good workers' uh, modern cottages with gardens, which include a, max, a minimum population and accordingly low land values. Geddes proposed a principle of housing in urban block, which he termed the home block, that would allow urban workers to reach home ownership and a place in the city while evading the consequences of capitalist land speculation. The scholarship generally assumes that this part of the Geddes plan was never realized, so these aspects of the plan were largely forgotten. The prevailing insight was that, uh, I quote, scientific publications on the history of the city, dealing primarily with the garden city, discuss the incompatibility of the home block in the 1930s, the city developed like an epidemic, making the master plan prepared by Geddes irrelevant and the home block housing replaced by modernist buildings on pilotes designed by graduates of the Bauhaus, quoting Weil Rochant. However, new findings I discovered in the archives and in the built environment revealed that Geddes' plan was implemented in full in the 1930s and 40s by those working class families who created semi-cooperative neighborhoods within the home blocks and created urban cit and reached urban citizenship through land acquisition and construction of homes and neighborhoods. Starting in the early 1930s, 16 working neighborhoods were built on the cheapest um, uh, northern and eastern boundaries of the plan. Many workers were incorporated into cooperatives, usually around a trade union like port workers, camel carriers, etc., to obtain land purchase loans and the construction of buildings at the expense of their future salaries. Many of the buildings were self-constructed. In weaker neighborhoods, um, the construction was characterized by substandard low materials and especially the use of scrap metal instead of uh, iron for construction. What was the role of women and planning for, for women in this urban creation? Uh, Geddes' plan explicitly focuses on the user experience of working class women and children um, and their planning implications. In programs he set up for cities and neighborhoods in India and Palestine, um, 
He has subordinated the goals of, of men and capital um, to the needs and lifestyle of women and their children. For example, um, in his uh, report for Tel Aviv, Geddes mentions a conversation with a landowner in Tel Aviv who demanded that he plan for high-rise uh, construction on the entire plot. In response, Geddes told him, imagine yourself as a working class woman with a basket full of groceries in one hand, a baby on the other, and another in the stomach. Now tell me, how many steps would you like to climb? One may resent the notion expressed here that the woman is supposed to be in charge of the home, grocery shopping, childbearing, and child rearing. Nonetheless, it is significant that Geddes has addressed and seen the special experiences of, of working women, giving them priority over maximizing the profits of landowners and developers. Tel Aviv's 1927 approved Geddes plan includes the construction of small two-bedroom homes with a balcony on 560 square foot plots involving construction restriction to one third of the plot, which leaves most of it for subsistence farms for growing vegetables, for eating, chicken coops, workshops, etc. Geddes grouped these family homes into home blocks, which were semi-autonomous urban blocks of varying sizes, depending on their location in the city, which consisted of an outer ring and an inner ring and included a small public space for the welfare of the block's occupants. Urban main roads surrounded each of those home blocks, while the blocks themselves were traversed only by narrow streets and pedestrian passes. Geddes has been developing this home block typology, beginning with his work Cities in Evolution from 1915, and over his years in India, but it was fully developed for his, uh, uh, his full, the uh, full urban development of this um, typology was for his Tel Aviv master plan. The Geddes plan area, now known as the Old North, was realized block by block according to land availability and the economic and technical capabilities of its residents by the creation of semi-autonomous neighborhoods in terms of their uh, typical lifestyle and culture. In other words, the urban sequence of the Geddes plan area that we know today was not created simultaneously, but as a quilt of neighborhoods where daily life and neighborhood culture existed on the basis of day and day uh, conduct in the home block. Each of those uh, semi-autonomous neighborhoods was organized around its worker community with its specific occupational and socioeconomic um, characteristics. And the house in these neighborhoods, therefore, was not limited to the single family small self-built home, but included the entire home block um, as intended uh, in Geddes's design. Women took an active role in the cooperative associations for the acquisition of land, planning of buildings, and creating the social fabric of the neighborhoods. A prime example is Paula Ben-Goyon, who is the wife of David Ben-Goyon, the first prime minister of Israel, um, a resident of Workers' Neighborhood A, the first working neighborhood in the Geddes plan, which marked the, um, the course of action for all other neighborhoods. Due to her husband's multiple occupations, Paula was the figure involved in the inc incorporation of families of the workers' leadership. Workers' Neighborhood A, formed between 1930 and 1931 by the collective purchase of cheap three-hectare plot at the northern tip of the Geddes area, near the tannery and sewage contaminated sea, unserviced and far from the city center during a period of ethno-national violence as you can see here in, this, in its location in the city. Construction was financed by Worker Bank based on workers' future earnings and included 35 identical houses designed by engineer David Tobia, uh, each with subsistence farms on uh, half and hectare plots. Houses included two rooms, a porch, a kitchen, and a bathroom. Paula Ben-Goyon is a signatory on the original plans for the Ben-Goyon house. Poor workers, like the Camel Leaders uh, um, Association, were building their neighborhoods on half plots and uh, auto-constructed from scrap materials. The lifestyle and culture of the urban bloc uh, were especially meaningful to the women who lived in the neighborhoods and managed their households and auxiliary farms, sometimes in addition to the work outside the home. In the absence of refrigerators, daily housekeeping included the purchase of fresh groceries and their cooking, which brought the women in daily interaction with shop shopkeepers and other neighborhood women in the urban space. Day-to-day -day encounters included travel between several dedicated stores, like the grocery stores, vegetable store, butcher, fish, fish shop, etc. 
The Geddes Plan and Municipal Bylaws placed stores in mixed residential and commercial areas in each neighborhood so that these were within walking distance of the neighborhood's women's homes. Daily shopping brought women out of their homes, meeting other women whose consumer space was also within walking distance of their homes. The nature of consumption in these small shops involved personal service by the grocer on demand, giving um, oranges or sliced cheese, so that her consumer choices and their meaning were exposed to the grocer and other women in the queue and involved women in the lives of other women, um, revolving guests arriving or the child not eating. In addition, the, pur the purchase process revealed the economic situation of the woman and her family, both through the type and quality of purchased items and through the payment status and granting of non-granting um, of credit. The use of block space was directly influenced by these interactions between women and shop owners and other women in the neighborhood. There are accounts um, of women choosing to walk inside the block through the yards in order to evade um, the shopkeepers to whom they were debted um, during times of unemployment. During periods of unemployment, the courtyards were more active. Vegetable gardens, chicken coops, and various workshops set up in the backyards to sustain home economy based on self-growing basic products, which characterized the poor neighborhoods even more. The courtyards of the houses were exposed to the neighboring houses, to the interior of the block, and to the pedestrian crossings within the block, and so to other occupants of the block, and especially to the women in it. Self-growing one's vegetables at, ho at the home plot was not just a sign of financial need. It also testified to the self-identity of the dwellers as working class and their adherence to Zionist ideology of extracting bread out of the land by urban workers. This allowed urban women to take part in the general national narrative of Zionist workers that is to emerge conceptually from their homes and to fit into the ideological space. One example is um, uh, this house is still remains in the built environment in its uh, original form. And the, the grandchildren of the people who lived there said, in this house on Latrice uh, 4, on a small cul-de-sac um, from Hannah Avenue, uh, grandfather himself built the house with, it, with his own hands, while grandmother uh, raised goats and chickens in the backyard, beds of vegetables that later became layers and over layers in pots and jars. Uh, grandma passed away on May, May, May 4th, Labor Day, and for her it was an appropriate timing. So Ken Geddes' view of women as major users in planning clients of the city and their inclusion in city planning be seen as a feminist concept. And what is the significance of urban planning as a practical feminism today? Feminist uh, theory is one of the most revolutionary intellectual theories of the 20th century due to its fundamental challenge um, on, on the system of building scientific knowledge through its fundamental appeal of the cause and effect relationship for social findings or data. So in short, feminist theory has revealed that attempts to um, scientifically understand populations um, within what is later termed the social sciences are based in depth on predetermined theories which allow one to find meaningful information within the infinite pool of social data. For example, Marxist theory uh, marks data on the economic status of humans as data of importance for understanding social um, stratifications. The first feminist showed that a discussion of the status of women in society is based on a theory, as opposed to a fact, that women are inferior to men in physically, intellectually, and emotionally structured way. Against this theory, feminists have put forward an alternative theory that women are equally capable as men and therefore deserve the same political uh, legal rights and equal opportunities to influence their fates and take part in economic and political society. The activism that resulted from this intellectual intervention demanded, and after a long struggle, um, even achieved in some places equal rights and political status for women and equal ac access to resources such as education. However, while women's social status has improved greatly um, to, due to their access to resources and centers of power, women are still underrepresented in centers of power such as government, senior management, high levels of academia, uh, etc. Faced with these facts, the initial theory of women's inherent inferiority was revisited and reiterated. Here it is argued, women, women were given the same opening conditions but achieved lesser achievements proving the theory, the initial theory, of the supposedly low capacities. Against this position, the second wave of feminism has pushed, 
put forth a revisited theory that points to social structures that have not yet been profoundly changed, forcing women to adopt traditional social roles that preserve their inferior economic and political status despite proven capabilities and skills. A prime example is the almost exclusive responsibility for housework and child rearing still placed on women as a social norm and causes many to retire from the work, work, workforce at competitive uh, levels. The activism resulting from this intellectual intervention requires a set of structural changes to the labor market and cultural rom, uh, norms, um, the struggle around which has not yet ended. Now, assessing the work of Geddes in this context, um, we need to understand that Geddes acted in the context of the very early activist and intellectual buds of feminist action, and his action in relation to it um, must be examined in this respect. His, works, his work is rooted in the basic assumption about the social roles of working class men and women and planned accordingly. This approach now carries problematic significance from today's feminist point of view, but it was an unusual approach in terms of social reform in Geddes' time. Peter Hall has identified Geddes' contribution to urban planning theories with the idea that men and women can build their own cities, as well as the idea that planning's role is to lead civic re reconstruction of society and the city. For Geddes, planning was a way to reconstruct society and to devote his efforts to envisioning and understanding the possibility of the city for ordinary citizens, uh, focusing on civic revival. And to quote Geddes, uh, civic revival must be designed and realized by the planners and by the users. Geddes' plan for Tel Aviv is based on the idea of a city by, built by its own residents. The plan, he stressed, must be realized through, through genuine and active involvement of the citizens that simplifies the building itself so that construction can be done at least by part by the worker himself. Indeed, my findings show that the home and home, homes and home blocks were actually built by the worker themselves with the female workers taking an active role, um, as we saw. The plan's design and approval occurred at a period of great conflict between workers and capitalists in Tel Aviv at the backdrop of grave housing conditions and rental costs. Workers responded by unionizing and uh, taking over uh, power of Tel Aviv's municipal government between 1925 and 1927 at the crucial moment of the British mandate approval of the plan. The brief two-year tenure of the Worker Party at this strategic moment was enough to transform the city's developmental model. Long controlled by capitalists, Tel Aviv's development was originally based on land speculation controlled by careful municipal development um, in concentric circles. Approving leapfrog development, the worker-led urban government permitted development of um, small self-built whole blocks at the edges of the plan before urban uh, infrastructure arrived such as roads, electricity, water, and sewage, which kept land prices low. Following construction of those worker housing blocks, the worker class government used public funds to service those remote worker neighborhoods with road, roads and public services, thereby creating the Geddes Plan layout in a housing before, before street framework. Decisive act in forming the infrastructure and layout of the Geddes Plan in a relatively short time. This process marks Tel Aviv as the only city uh, the only modern city planned for and by workers and executed by means of self-governance by disenfranchised urban workers under conditions of intense commodification rather than the modernist Bauhaus architecture associated with it. Geddes himself uh, explicitly criticized Bauhaus architecture's focus on the facade rather than on the dwelling conditions of the apartments behind those facades. Geddes' planning for a city for female workers, seemingly a contradiction in terms, has produced a fascinating city and urban culture produced by the explicit clients of the plan, female workers orchestrating an hierarchical archipelago of self-run urban neighborhoods attentive to the lives of female workers tied together to form a city um, um, of distinct urban culture. Thank you. Thank you.